Well, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to the second annual Institute for Energy Efficiency uh, Summit. This is a very timely topic. I think I'm preaching to the choir when we're all aware of the energy crisis that we as a, as a society are facing. It really brings together a group of people from industry, from academia, from government, with the purpose of focusing on the topic of energy efficiency. I think the goal of the, of, the, of the summit is basically to get a lot of people together and realize other things that are going on and stimulating them to think in other ways. The best way to predict the future is in fact to invent it. And I think that's in fact what's so exciting about this moment. We've got challenges, but we've also got big, big opportunities. We are at the still early stages of trying to solve the, the carbon problem, the energy problem, because you know, you've got billions of people in China and India that want a better life, and they're gonna, they're gonna become larger energy consumers. Well, it was a really wide-ranging and lively discussion, I have to say, it covered everything from the context and, and uh, how human beings act around new technologies to what can we really expect over the next five years uh, in terms of actual market uptake, looking at other technologies such as wind, uh, what's happening with LEDs, data centers, uh, office, new office technology, virtual uh, interaction technologies as well. I talked about energy efficiency and ways that we can use technology, policy, and finance to, to take greater advantage of, of all the many energy efficiency opportunities we have across our economy. It's nice to see how the traditional silicon technology has progressed to the point where now modules are available that are simple to put into consumers' homes. A company associated with making now plastic solar cells. That's, that's a much less established technology, but if that goes through, that could really change our perspective on how to manufacture solar cells, capture sunlight using cheaper materials than the material used to actually take sunlight and make it into electricity. So it's, these are sort of both intrinsic established technologies, emerging technologies, and new ways of configuring everything together to make it work better. But I think it was both about how to make computing more energy efficient and how to use computing to make society more energy efficient. Um, and so we had people talk about how to manage that IT, in particular at large scale, uh, so very large systems. Uh, Rich Wolski talked about uh, this open source cloud computing software that his company works on. And then uh, Kathy Yellick talked about how they're doing lots of science very efficiently at Florence Berkeley National Labs. And then uh, Bob Sproul talked about both sort of the general technology for uh, computing systems, um, how to make them more efficient, how to use uh, what we call consolidation and virtualization, which takes uh, work from many machines and, and brings it together on one machine to be more efficient. Um, and also, he talked about new technologies that they use in hardware, and then a little bit, um, although we didn't have a lot of time, about how IT can be used to optimize, you know, sort of day-to-day -day life. We're relatively at the beginning of Google's own work, work on energy. We're very interested in a range of technologies on both the energy efficiency side and on the clean energy supply side, you know, various types of renewables. Uh, we're very interested in, in ways that we can, can help advance engineering when it comes to energy, how we can improve the flow of capital when it comes to clean energy, how we can make better policy decisions at the, the state and the federal level. And so obviously, the University of California has got a whole host of things going on that I think could be, could be useful to us both. The transition that the panel talked a lot about was taking that inside data centers, inside computers even, and having interconnects between, certainly between boxes and, and at some point between chips, so that was a big focus, uh, that are optical. And the main reason is the capacity of optical connections is, you know, a thousand times higher than an electrical wire. So our panel was about tools for energy efficient technologies in buildings. So we had Kerry Vandenberg, who is the CEO of Agile Waves, uh, to, to start it off. They, they actually have a technology that uh, does metering in buildings and tries to understand how energy is actually uh, being spent and then gives advice on how it should, should be spent. Uh, then we had Professor Takashi Hikihara, who is doing some interesting uh, novel work on utilizing the information technologies um, routing idea. So he's trying to see whether we can actually get constant flows of energy uh, by routing energy in different packets, individual packets, like we route information. 
Uh, then we had after that Marty Ogram from Cisco Systems. The technology that they have is actually what we call a middleware. It's trying to get us the data that we need to actually come in and try to get to operate the buildings better. You know, one of the values of a, of a conference is the the people-to-people -people interactions. There's still enormous value in having the face-to-face -face contact. The director of the Smart Lighting Institute, Bob Karlacek, gave a very nice overview of what's needed to get LEDs into the lighting market. James Speck gave a overview on the materials technology and the performance metrics needed to uh, penetrate the LED market. And finally, we had uh, Noah Horowitz, the director of the Energy Efficiency Center at the Natural Resources uh, Defense Council, uh, give a good overview on the standards and the kind of the efficiency standards we need for the LED lighting to penetrate the, uh, the market. In the U.S. alone, switching to LED lighting uh, on the order of uh, 100 power plants could be taken offline. And the fact that lighting consumes about 20 to 30 percent of worldwide electricity consumption means it plays a huge uh, it's a huge chunk of the uh, electricity energy spectrum, so we can take that down and reduce the energy demand from this 20 to 30 percent to on the order of 5 to 10 percent. And there's the demonstration out front. It's always fun to kind of get a sense for what's coming down the road, but the great thing that came out of this conference was there's already a ton of stuff, and it's really, there's a lot of energy that could be saved if people just implemented what, just do things they, that are available today. The issues have been around a long time, there are a lot of efforts underway, but this is kind of the time. This is the time that things are really starting to happen. We're seeing lighting changes. We're seeing building envelope and building design changes. We're seeing total system efficiencies at the level of the utility. And things are really starting to take off.